Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. I'm feeding my friend uh, Bucky the Boomslang here. Um, <laughs> well, she's coming to me for food today. You know, I I have found Boomslangs to be very shy snakes. Uh 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 uh. uh what are you doing? Are you gonna go? Are you gonna go dipping in the uh are you gonna go dipping in the uh the pail here? <laughs> so much for being shy anymore. Well, I was saying Bucky used to be, and still is to a great extent, uh a very shy snake. But uh, when she's hungry, uh, uh, she doesn't care. You know, it's me. I haven't ever hurt her or anything like that. Uh, she just prefers that you know I don't handle her much, which I don't because boom slangs are highly toxic. And unlike the well, the fallacy is that you know they need to hold on to you and chew. Uh, but in reality, they just need to tap you in order to envenom you. Uh, so, you know, I treat these guys with, you know, a great deal of caution. And, you know, right now I'm just sort of sitting very still because uh, she very much is a sight feeder. So I am not going to move... Uh, uh, while she's in feed mode because I don't want an inadvertent uh, bite on my leg. Boom slang venom is the venomous snake equivalent of Ebola. Uh, it breaks break down it breaks down your capillaries, your capillaries ooze serum and everything else and uh, uh, you end up bleeding from every pore and orifice and internally until you uh, have a circulatory collapse. It's not a very pleasant way to go. Fortunately, not many people are envenomed by boom slangs in the world. Uh, And the downside to that is there's not a large call for antivenins, so South African uh, polyvalent, uh, I'm sorry, South African venom labs uh, doesn't make a whole lot. I know you prefer the, it from the side, not head on. Okay, I know. So there's, you know, a shortage of venom because these suckers are not easy to extract from. Uh, there's not much incentive to produce a large quantity with some surplus. Uh, subsequently, uh, it's difficult to come by. Now I have three vials uh, downstairs in the anti-venom fridge that are expired and the new ones cost about five or six thousand dollars a vial and expire in three years. Are you done? When she wipes her face, she's done. Okay, now that you're done, don't you think we ought to get you back into your cage? Huh? Can we do this without too much of a tussle? Huh? Come on. There we go. Come on. You're good. Here you go. There we go. There's your cage. There's your cage. <clears throat> so, 
So when she wipes her face like that, she's done eating, she's had her fill, and generally will crawl into her cage and into the back of the cage and uh, uh, go into a food coma. And there we have it. It was nice uh, visiting with you there, Miss Bucky. Very nice visiting with you. Yeah, was that tasty? Go ahead, get the rest of your body in there. You know, I thought about breeding her with the male that's next door in that cage this year, but who wants a bunch of little assholes like that juvenile around? Um, you know, he's a nightmare, and, you know, for a while there I had to force feed him. Was that tasty, huh? Was that tasty? Why don't you get the rest of you in the cage so I can shut the door? Okay, that's a good girl. There we go. There we go. Come on, get the last bit of tail in there. Now, I call her Bucky because when she first arrived, she had the, you can see the, front defect on her nose that's supposed to be all black well bone was exposed and it looked like she had buck teeth but you know under my care and mrs. viper keepers care uh, she's repaired the damage and the scales are regrowing over the bone was that tasty huh okay okay I think <laughs> That's called snake burping because they take in a lot of air with the uh, food items, so they uh, uh, they burp it up and it looks like it's threatening. Uh, that's not a threat posture from uh, from Miss Bucky. Wild caught looks like a male water cobra is out for cannula feeding. Unfortunately, he's not feeding on his own, but you know we've been just appreciating his beauty here on the table and he's being well behaved he's you know defensive obviously but has made no uh, aggressive moves to uh, actively defend himself uh, so we figure we get the camera out and take a, a little bit of video huh? so we can do water culbra cam and see what he does No, this is not a highway to come and visit me. Come on, focus, Cam. Huh? It's like doing the herky jerky on it, sort of. Hi. See? And of course, it's not interested in focusing. The, the culprit's focused, but the camera's not. <laughs> Hi, bud. How are you doing? Just gonna sort of look away until it changes its focus, then go back. And maybe it will focus. Hi, yeah, see? This is not gonna hurt you. You have to stick your tongue out in order to find out what it is. Huh? It's not gonna hurt you. See? Hi, yes, I know you're doing the jerkies. Very beautiful uh, animals. Uh, certainly one of my favorite of the true culbras to keep. These are generally not assholes like all the other culbras, but can actually be easily managed. If they weren't so toxic, uh, they would make a good starter culbra for people because they're really quite docile under most circumstances and cases. Um, although I don't, I could practically free handle the two large adult males that I've had since they were hatchling. Uh, their only interest is in food and as long as it's not a feeding uh, visit uh, or I have mouse scent on me, um, they're quite calm, very easy to, to handle and move from place to place, uh, just eat well and are very, very hardy snakes. Uh, um, except these are pretty rare. 
this was the first batch in like 10 or more years that I saw come in from the wild um, because these are in eastern Congo, western uh, Tanzania. Um, so these are not easy to come by because if you know your geography, that area is really remote. Um, you have to get there by boat and you know it's really deep jungle and God knows what what's gonna get you. Um, so they have a very long river trip out to get the where these are and to catch them and bring them back alive and get them over here. Um, I've successfully gotten a, a reproductive pair to actually reproduce and produce some baby, uh, some eggs, but unfortunately the eggs didn't hatch and the female died after giving birth the next day, which was very, very sad. Um, so we're still trying. Uh, my friend Kurt Johnson was the only one that I know of to successfully breed these in captivity. Uh, here in the States and unfortunately Kurt uh, passed away I think it was 2008 or 2009 um, and all that knowledge and skill sort of went uh, with him. So we're gonna stop the camera now because as you can see on the table uh, we've got some force feeding to do so we can keep him alive and enjoy him for uh, another day and hopefully he'll uh, he'll get used to things and start accepting uh, frozen thawed uh, rodents um, like his uh, his colleagues the little babies that are in the drawer are eating you know frozen thawed pinks right off the tongs with great gusto um, everybody else is eating it's just that uh, this guy and the uh, unnamed species of water culver, the Congos, which I have three in, in the room here, uh, definitely uh, are, are tough to feed. Um, the, I've got a, an adult Congo water culver that was a, a, a captive hatched baby, and he eats you know, rodents like there's no tomorrow, so, um, you know, we have to do this until we can get them switched over, like we do with a lot of our snakes. Look at that beautiful, beautiful pattern. Such pretty snakes. Yep. You know what's coming. This is a baby death adder that was born, uh, uh, earlier this year, and as you can see, has <laughs> very friendly attitude. Um, I just showed Mrs. Viper Keeper its sibling and wouldn't you say that it's stockier and at least a third longer? Oh yes. Um, I, I just fed it yesterday. It's eating on its own. It's eating well. This one is not eating so well. Um, there were four born. One died relatively quickly. The other one just rolled for no apparent reason. Uh, this is number three. Number four is doing quite well. Um, this one is scrawny and not eating on its own. It will occasionally take a gecko, but mm, it, it hasn't been eating the past couple of offerings, so uh, it's time to get some nourishment into it, which means that I have to hold that very dangerous and toxic little head in my hand. Now, it's one thing holding the very uh, dangerous little speckled rattlesnake heads in my hand. Um, the specks would probably be very... They would really have their work cut out to kill me. Um, this snake can kill me even at that size. Uh, death adder venom is very toxic and uh, can be very quick acting. It can also be slow acting. Uh, so this is this is a much more difficult character. Also, these guys are strong as hell. They don't have a, a long neck and a big head like the rattlesnakes. They're a little tougher to hold on to. So you're gonna bite the stick, huh? Is that what you're gonna do? I see you tonguing it, huh? 
You need to bite that stick. Huh? As soon as these guys know that their neck is getting pinched, they will turn their head and bite, just like that. And that's what's very dangerous about pinning these guys is they, they have a very short head and will come around on you. Um, that's why <laughs> these really, really are tough. Um, and don't they slip in their skin real easy? They do, especially the if they're really thin. There you go. You can do that on the, pa on the towel here. Thank you so much. So it's not on me. See, you do have some hoop in you. Okay. Not anymore. Yes, not anymore, <laughs> but at least it's not on me or I'm on my clothes like it usually is. This is another one of their tactics. I will put my tail around my head and make it very difficult for you to do whatever you wanted to do around my head. Also, their bite is really strong and, you know, he's pulverizing that poor little pinky's skull um, and will make its brain ooze out. Uh, and that's another reason why I don't really um, uh, heat the pinkies too much because it's a lot easier for them to squish their brains out. All right, well, this is a little big for you, but we got to get a big meal into you. And if we're going through all this exercise, uh, we're going to do it. But he's resistive. My little guy, I don't want to hurt you either. I'm trying to go as slow and gently because everybody has experienced uh, uh, either swallowing something too large and it stretches your esophagus, which is really painful, or even uh, sometimes uh, pooing out something larger than it went in <laughs> and have experienced that sort of pain. Uh, so. I try to go really slow. He's very thin, but very feisty. So we're gonna put him back in his cage. I mean, beautiful, beautiful animal, but I don't know if it's going to uh, survive.